welcome you are watching Head to Head I'm Antonina Antosha with UA TV. The Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe started its first autumn session in Strasbourg. The Ukrainian delegation boycotted the session after Russia was reinstated in June. Meanwhile, Ukrainian film director and former political prisoner Oleg Sentsov is taking part in a PACE discussion dedicated to human rights. He has already met with French President Emmanuel Macron. To discuss this, we are joined in the studio today by Vitaly Martinuk. He is the head of international programs at the Center for Global Studies Strategy 21. Hello and thank you for joining us. Hello. So, uh, as an act of support for Ukraine, Latvia, Lithuania, Georgia, uh, Estonia and Poland uh, are boycotting some of the official events dedicated to the autumn session of the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe. Uh, why only these countries? First of all, I think that uh, all these uh, countries which, which joined uh, Ukraine and boycott, they uh, feel uh, Russian aggression uh, on uh, their um, national levels. Mm -hmm. uh, because three Baltic countries uh, are very close to the Russian Federations and uh, they uh, have been under negative impact of the foreign policy of the Russian Federation. Uh, Poland the same, because uh, Poland has uh, historical uh, relations with uh, Russia and uh, these relations uh, have not been good, mm -hmm. if uh, we can say so, but mainly bad relations between you two countries. You said these countries that are supporting the boycott of Ukraine have uh, felt the Russian aggression on the national level. Does this mean that all the other countries that are somehow, maybe not uh, particularly, but at least on the informational level, are involved in the conflict that is going on between Russia and Ukraine, do not feel this aggression, the Kremlin's aggression? I, I think that uh, they don't feel threats. Mm. real threats. Yes, mm -hmm, they are involved, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, they are challenged by the uh, destructive policy of the Russian Federation, but uh, they, are, they are not so close to the Russian Federation and uh, it is not strange that um, uh, four battalions, NATO battalions, are located namely in three Baltic countries mm -hmm. and Poland, mm -hmm. because uh, alliance, it's a bit a part of uh, the topic of our discussion, but uh, it demonstrates that uh, the Alliance uh, assesses um, threats in these four countries. Mm -hmm. And of course, Georgia. Georgia. Well, we all know the yeah. sad story of Georgia. Yeah, yeah, separate story. Ukraine boycotting the parliamentary assembly session. Um, in terms of geopolitical place of Ukraine on the international arena. What kind of effect could it have or what kind of outcome could we face? Um, by this time I can assess that uh, uh, current boycott is a continuation of a previous decision made by the Ukrainian parliament mm -hmm. and uh, uh, it is logical that a new um, appointed delegation uh, does not go to Strasbourg for this autumn session uh, because it demonstrates the whole world that Ukraine has uh, um, ongoing foreign policy. Not just it was uh, a foreign policy before the election and now new foreign policy after election and that uh, our uh, strategic goal, uh, foreign policy strategic goal to stop the Russian war, the Russian aggression against Ukraine, to um, uh, have international support mm -hmm. for our uh, resistance and uh, to continue European Euro-Atlantic integration. And, but uh, at the top of uh, issues of, of our foreign policy uh, is protection of human rights, of course. You've just mentioned that officially there is no Ukrainian delegation in Strasbourg this time. However, unofficially, uh, there is uh, the chairman of the Ukrainian delegation right now in Strasbourg for informal meetings with uh, uh, his foreign counterparts. What could be the issues discussed? Uh, I think that uh, it is enough reasonable to be present there. 
uh, to know the situation from inside, to uh, have several meetings with uh, representatives of other countries, and uh, not to allow Russian delegations, which is now inside, again inside of the uh, Parliamentary mm -hmm. Assembly, uh, to uh, promote uh, the Russian vision of, of the problematics. Uh, it is also necessary uh, to uh, persuade uh, other national delegations that uh, Russia, uh, besides Russia, uh, is turned back to the assembly, that Russia is a violator of uh, principles and rules of uh, the Council of mm -hmm. Europe. And according to a uh, resolution um, adopted by the assembly in June this year, Russia uh, had to uh, implement all recommendations um, had made by the Parliamentary Assembly uh, before that decision and uh, to uh, follow in future the principles and rules. But as we see by this time, uh, Russia has made almost nothing. Okay. Member of the Ukrainian delegation to the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe and um, MP from Ukraine's European Solidarity Party, Alexei Honcharenko, said that the presidential committee of the PACE is about to arrive to Ukraine for the consultations. What kind of, a, of the consultations are we talking about here? Uh, the primary um, issue uh, for the Ukrainian delegation is what to do after the autumn session of the assembly. Uh, to continue its full participation in uh, the coming sessions or to continue a boycott. Mm -hmm. It is a very complicated uh, decision to be made by the Ukrainian part. Uh, but at the same time, it's necessary to understand the vision of other delegations, national delegations. Absolutely. Uh, that's why uh, there is a need to uh, hold several consultations. First of all, with uh, five countries which uh, joined the Ukrainian boycott and with other countries like France, Germany, Austria and so on. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for coming and explaining the whole situation to us. That was Vitaly Martinuk. He is the head of international programs at the Center for Global Studies, Strategy 21. Thank you so much for watching Head to Head. Stay tuned with UATV for the rest. Yeah.